interesting statistic is that 70% of candidates are passive market candidates. They're mm. candidates who would change job if they saw the right opportunity, but they're not actively looking for them. They're not on mm. the job boards. They're not with a recruiter. As we mentioned last time, construction is more than just bricks and mortar. And although the previous episode was centralised around bits and bytes, another integral part of the built environment, we discovered that construction is still all about people who help build our cities and our communities. In this episode, we're going beyond the blueprints and machinery to explore the vital concept of community building. In a world where projects grow larger and more complex, the need for a cohesive team and harmonious partnerships has never been greater. So fostering better connections, nurturing collaborations, and building stronger communities within the construction industry can only lead to efficiencies and better practices. If we look at the construction industry as a whole, or even a single project, we can see how disparate it has become. From architects and engineers to contractors and other off-site stakeholders, the number of people involved with those different positions, responsibilities, and agendas is vast. So the power of breaking down those silos and fostering a sense of unity among diverse professionals who make construction possible cannot be overlooked. We also cannot lose sight of the fact that professional relationships need to be formed through more structured practices when it comes to employee and employer relationships. Put simply, we want our cake and we want to eat it with people we know, like, and trust, as well as find those people that can help make the cake and possibly eat it with us. Confused? Yeah, yeah, I am. I wish I hadn't gone down that route. Uh, I've, I've got to mention that no cakes were consumed during the recording of this podcast, by the way. Before I intro our guest today, Alex Ramsden, his company, Build My Talent, which is a community-led organization that shares and leverages members' expertise by combining networking, learning, and a jobs board. After initial feedback, he's looking to partner with five organizations that will be pivotal in helping grow and develop the platform, Build My Talent, to the next level. And you know what? If you're interested, you might even find a candidate or two. If you want to get involved in developing Build My Talent, which I strongly advise you do, you can contact Alex on alexramsden at buildmytalent.com. His email address will also be in the show notes, so don't worry if I said that too quickly. Just dive into the show notes. Get in touch. Say you heard about it on Construction Disrupted and will both be forever grateful. Anyway, let's meet him. Who better to chat with here than Alex Ramsden, CEO and founder of Build My Talent, a community-led organization that shares and leverages its members' expertise to put people in jobs together by combining networking, learning, and a jobs board to benefit both professional employees and employers within the construction industry. Alex was one of the winners of a young entrepreneur scheme back in 2021. And what started out as a pandemic project developed into a well-established platform. But I won't steal this thunder too much there. Alex, hello and welcome. Hi, Peter. Thank you very much for having me on. Absolute pleasure. Is there anything I missed from that intro that uh, I should add on there? No, I think that's all good. Right, Alex, I gave a little bit of an insight into the platform that you've created there. But what I think would be really interesting, and I don't normally do this, I, I usually get into the, the, the meatier stuff rather than people's backgrounds. But what I'd quite like to know and understand is how Build My Talent came about. Yeah. Um, you know, y it wasn't just a I'm going to build this and people love it. So can you just explain how you've got to where you are now? Yeah, exactly. And as you said in your introduction, it was kind of a pandemic product uh, project. So it started off in 2020. It was, I think, just after I graduated in June 2020. Um, at that point, the UK was in its first lockdown, I think, in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So I we started off as a LinkedIn group. And as you kind of said, it wasn't, it was never started to be a business from the beginning. And it was 
he actually started off as a social group. It was a place for graduates to come together, students to come together, to kind of um, talk to each other. Obviously, everyone yeah, being a bit isolated at that time, but they, yeah, it was a place for people to come together, for people to do online CPDs, for people to do like, competitions and stuff like that. Um, because it was something that wasn't really talked about at that time. A lot, there was a lot about people being put on furlough, which is obviously happened to 90, 95% of adults. But for students and graduates, they didn't have that option. They completed mm-hmm. their course in June and suddenly they were just yeah, left out. They couldn't apply for jobs. Nobody was hiring. They couldn't get on furlough schemes because they hadn't even started a job. So it was a very specific niche, which I myself was a part of but it wasn't being mentioned. So I wanted to do something about it. So that's, yeah, that was the originally, that was the original idea of why it came about. And it didn't start as its own entity, did it? Yeah, so it was a LinkedIn group. It was literally one of those social groups that you see in LinkedIn. Um, yeah, it started off like that for a good six months or so. Okay. Um, we grew to think about a thousand members on there. And then I then decided to, yeah, how could we actually take it further? Because I always wanted to do business myself. I did business studies in school. I wanted to do something like that, but I wasn't exactly sure on what that would be. Mm-hmm. This kind of just happened. It wasn't planned. It was just, yeah, we suddenly had a group. We suddenly had people joining it and people finding use for it. So we're like, okay, how can we actually make money from it? But how mm-hmm. can we make sure we don't decrease the value for users on it? So that's where we're like, okay what similar models I mean LinkedIn itself it's a similar model it's a free social network but it makes us money from different ways um so using that kind of idea we wanted to create a website we wanted to have somewhere for people to do more on because obviously LinkedIn groups very limited to what you can do so then to create a platform and then we decided to use jobs or job adverts as a way to bring in revenue to help keep uh, help keep the community uh, mm. going help funding everything essentially help cover the server costs and all that and then in that way, we could keep uh, it free for users. So they could continue using the platform and we could then charge the construction companies to put jobs on the platform. And then at the same time, that's jobs that are going to directly to our users as well. So everyone wins, really. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So in, in, in looking at, I tried to get some facts and figures in terms of how many groups and communities there were online and and the the two main numbers that i came up with i couldn't find one for linkedin i've got no mm. idea how many groups there are on on linkedin well, I assume, yeah it must be a few <laughs> hundred thousand link groups yeah but but to put that into perspective apparently there's about 10 million on uh, okay. facebook okay <laughs> and there's there's about 130,000 on on reddit at like active communities and okay. they were the only two numbers that kind of sprung about so was it an easy decision to move it from linkedin to your own um you know your your own website your own dedicated platform yeah kind of because it it had to be done even though yeah linkedin groups is set up it's already free Mm. great but it's very limited to what you can do it's a single feed it's massive here people can post people can react to post it and that was always ever going to be it's never going to be more than that so yeah, even though obviously it was a risk moving people from that into a separate platform, it, it had to be done and yeah, it had to be done essentially. But it was easier than I thought it would be. We ended up doing like a small crowdfunding round. Mm-hmm. I think it was about £6,000 that we raised to get the platform together. Yes. And once we got it online, I think we hit about 500, 600 people within the first couple of weeks. So it, was, <laughs> it almost overtook the LinkedIn group quite quickly, actually. Um, yeah, so it was at is yeah difficult decision but decision well, sorry not a difficult decision it was a hard decision but it had it had to be made it had to happen for it to continue to for it to be a business because there was no way of monetizing it within the linkedin group yeah so it, it's really interesting that you say that it grew a lot quicker than having a linkedin group because if you think about it, it it's it's an unknown tested platform yeah. whereas on linkedin you know it, it's tried it's trusted but for yeah. some reason we all know groups don't really work on 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 linkedin and, and, and yeah. company pages and stuff but it's strange how you probably already had that um that awareness within the marketplace that people were just drawn to it it was yeah it was that and it's i mean linkedin groups at the time were around but they weren't really used i mean in the last few months they're a lot more popular now but at yeah. that time they weren't that popular so we even thought about doing a company page and we ended up doing a company page separately and even that had more followers than members in the group and yeah, I'm not sure the reason behind it, but mm. it's LinkedIn groups here. Yeah, people joined, but I think 
using emails, using people signing up to a separate platform was just as good for us. Um, and luckily, it being a social network, we did look at different ways of doing it. But the way we found out, saying that WordPress plugins, um, it was essentially code we were hiring from someone else, and it was only a couple hundred pound a year for like certain aspects rather than. If you created a social network from scratch, it would be a lot more. So it wasn't too much to actually do the website itself. And because it was quite well made, I think that it gave people trust as well. They were able to like create an account easily, where to get emails directly. And because of that, I guess that helped get users onto the platform in the early days. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That, that's cool. So speaking of of, of communities and, and, and platforms. Uh, you're part of Innovate UK Edge, are you? Can you tell me a bit yeah. about that? Yes, very recently, actually, only two weeks ago, less than two oh, weeks nice ago. One. Yeah, so we applied to this program um, alongside a uh, grant application as well, which is also called Innovate Smart UK Grant. Um, in very similar names, they're both part of the same uh, government organization, I think science, technology, um, organization science so technology branch of the government they have then have like a few different organizations within that platform one being the grant mm -hmm. one being innovate uk edge and innovate uk edge essentially is a supportive network or supportive group that helps technology-based companies to scale up to grow to um yeah overcome challenges which they might be facing mm -hmm. it's Similar to an accelerator, I find out. I mean, I've only had my first meeting on Tuesday, so about three days ago, so it's very early stage. But what, what we've seen so far is that it's, yeah, like a support-based organisation that helps in multiple different ways, from um, financial advice, from um, there's a lot about expanding outside the UK as well, so yeah, networks in different countries, I think even like flight costs and stuff like that. Um, there's a few... There's multiple different ways of doing it and they also help like research and development um with work with universities to do, and they provide funding to like research into specific areas which mm. i'm not 100 sure because i'm still only just starting yeah. myself but it's a really cool organization and as i say it's government funded it's it's they want the uk to be an innovation um the top innovative country i think it's by 2035 i think they said so it's this program is essentially to help companies to then yeah support the uk uh, in general okay that's 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 nice that's it, it's always a positive thing I, i've i've heard of Innov uh, innovate uk you know a number of times working in yeah. construction technology and yeah yeah it's, it's it's always cool to to know that there's things like that that exist yeah and it's something construction needs as well it needs more innovation in technology as well which obviously <laughs> one reason for how we're doing this podcast today and it's yeah it's something that the government definitely wants to help so because obviously buildings affect every aspect of everyone's lives so if you're in the industry or not it's yeah you're going to be using a building at some point every single day so yeah, yeah it makes sense for the best technology to be used to yeah help the industry in whichever way possible couldn't couldn't agree more so let's 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 get into uh jobs and communities and 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 things like that and now we've we've discussed and established what uh, what you you actually do uh some interesting stats on kind of communities and, and things like that 98 percent of people who belong to an online group say they feel a sense of belonging to that group okay. um but 55 percent, so half of um professionals that are part of groups report that it's difficult to consistently engage with with other members and also people that run communities say it's difficult to engage with with members so mm -hmm. First of all, um, I'd like to tackle that. And how how do you make sure that engagement uh, occurs on on what you've built? Yeah. yeah, that's that's a difficult bit, isn't it? You can get <laughs> bored, but it's keeping them engaged. That's the problem. And yeah. we're, we're a pandemic. It worked in our favour because everyone was mm. working from home or everyone was on furlough. So starting off, that's probably one of the main reasons why it took off so quickly is that everyone had the time to get engaged, to, to engage with the platform, to sign up, to do CPDs, to do competitions, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so in the beginning, it was so easy. But as you say, well, half, you're start saying half of people actually struggle to um, keep engaged with a platform. And obviously, because we're all construction professionals, 90, 95% of them will be working full time. So it's with that, it's always difficult to then um yeah we engage with a, a community outside of work because it's always going to be second priority obviously you've got, then you've got your life you've got your family and all of that kind of stuff in the way 
So it always gets in the way, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's not as high priority, and which is obviously perfectly fine. It's, it's the way it should be. So it's yeah, the way we're trying to do it is that even though it's a community, and even though we want people to engage with the platform as much as we can, it's it's never going to be a full time thing. We're not expecting people to mm. log on every day, even every week. It's something that's there when it's needed, and we're we're calling it an ecosystem model, really, where it's we're looking at supporting construction professionals in every single aspect of their career. So whether it's they want to do networking, they want to attend events, they want to do CPDs for their um, professional, um, we've got like that institutes you have to do certain amount of CPD hours every month, or it could be like learning, you want to upskill, you want to learn something new for just because you want to, or because of you need a promotion or something like that, and they, they need you to learn something more about that bit. Or it could be finding your next job it could be getting recruitment advice so that's we're now building this model where we're um yeah making sure that every single aspect of a construction professional's career we'll be able to help them in a certain way and with recruitment that will only be once every year once every two years if that so it's something like that we'll never be engaged with all the time mm-hmm. we're again cpds maybe once a month twice a month so it's making sure that we're there when they're needed and then so that's kind of what we're doing now, but we are looking forward. How can we continue to keep users engaged? And we're actually looking at how AI can be used in that aspect and how um, yeah, AI, smart algorithm matching, that kind of stuff. So we're looking to use a similar model like Facebook and Instagram do for users and adverts. So if someone is going scrolling through Facebook, they're liking videos or whatever, they might then start getting adverts for that specific thing whether it be like on their cars or like lifestyle or traveling or something like that they'll get adverts tailored to what place they're looking at mm. so we're kind of taking that same kind of idea and if someone's facing for example if someone's reacting to an architect- architecture magazine or if someone's liking pictures of on the skyscrapers or whatever we can then match them to specific jobs in that area or specific learning courses to help them get the job in that area and using that kind of matching okay I think one thing that that people would like to know, when you look at, at, at communities like like you've built, if somebody came to you and said, "I'm part of it, but I want to get the best out of it," what would you advise them to to be doing to to maximize what they can get out of being part of a a community? Yeah, it's. I mean, the best way is probably to speak to someone within that community, as in like an admin or like myself as well. So mm. we are we have a champion program as well, which is made up of construction professionals, both uh, from students all the way up to directors, and uh, I think we've even got one or two lecturers on board that program as well. And these kind of champions are people who are helping with the community, but then also offering support, advice, work with other groups as well. Um, so. Again, it's quite a stage, but we are trying to get to a point where we're even looking at potentially a Discord room as well to like actually work okay. with the community to keep people engaged on a lot quicker basis. Because right now, it's a social network, people post every so often. You might see a post, you might miss it, whilst a Discord mm. room or something a bit more instant, instant messaging. And it's something we'll then integrate into the platform when we build the rest of it. Um, but yeah, it's trying to be visible, I guess, is the best way to keep users engaged. It's, it's making sure you're there to then offer tailored support to it um to them so if they're yeah if they for example want some advice on the job or they're looking for a specific job in a specific location yes they can go on the job board and they can filter all of that out but we can actually go in there and we can actually help and we can provide them a detailed link to exactly the jobs they should be looking for we can offer advice we can look at what even like what salary you should be looking at at how much how many years you've done the experience you've had what aspect what direct part of that specific job title like if it's like engineering, obviously, there's so many different ways of engineering. It's, it's looking at what suits the best career path. Um, and it's something we're trying to get better at doing as well. We're trying to work with recruitment experts as well, or people within the industry on that side, on the recruitment side, as well as mm. construction company side, to offer the best advice. Because in my well, myself, I was actually an architectural technologist background, so I know I'm not going to have all the answers for recruitment side. I'm not going to have all the answers on any specific aspects, but it's making sure that if I don't know the answers, how I can pass them on to someone who does know the answer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I suppose from that perspective, as we all know, it's all about that collaboration. It's all about 
that communication and engagement and getting the best out of of um, any any community platform really yeah exactly completely agree uh, your your model um you want to keep it free for for users uh, that yeah. are looking for for jobs or they want cpds or they want to be part of it which is absolutely fantastic i i love that that kind of model because it serves it serves the, the right people um and in in my in my eyes the right people are paying for that to to occur as well but if if that was switched would you advise anyone to ever pay to be part of something like that um or should it be free for the people that really need it for our platform it has to be free yeah because one of the other aspects we're looking at is we want the ecosystem model that we're building to be um there for every aspect of construction professionals career mm. but we also want to make sure it's accessible to everyone so yeah. as part of the next project we're looking at gateways so you could be a ex-prison leaver you could be returning from maternity leave you could be a refugee you could be international worker what we're trying to then do is actually create specific gateway pages to every aspect okay. um so yeah you'd have like the idea is to have a designated page if you're say ex-prison leaver We'll then offer advice, we'll offer other organisations that are available, we'll offer learning courses that you can do. We can um, have a list of jobs that are specifically tailored for prison leavers and that will be tailored advice for that specific group because, uh, yeah, every we want to make sure it's accessible and we want to make sure the construction industry is accessible for everyone regardless of the mm. background. I mean, you'll know as well as I do is that there's a massive gender imbalance within the construction industry. Probably think it's the worst of any industry, but if not one of the there's worst. A, there's a lot of imbalances, isn't there? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's just one I was going to say. The diversity imbalance, which isn't talked about that much. Um, neurodiverse imbalance as well. There's so many different things, and gender balance is just the start of it. It's, it's, the industry at the moment isn't accessible for everyone, and we want to make sure we do our part to make sure it is accessible. And by keeping it free, it's got to be one of the ways of doing it. And it's it's fine it's something we would want to do anyway even if we had the opportunity to charge we want to make sure it is get free because it's not needed to be honest like as a business model with job adverts is one aspect but yeah learning courses potentially some of those could be paid what i'm trying to say is that yeah it's got to be accessible for everyone we we would never charge for anyone to use uh, yeah. that because it's it doesn't work for multiple reasons yeah for sure so do you do you do you, do you focus on on that and trying to get that diversity um, and and try and balance those imbalances that are right across construction? Is that one of your, kind of your objectives, if you like, or is it yeah. is it a case of there's not a lot we can do to encourage that? Yes. So we have with the social network side, we have something called five focus points, which we are five things that we think affect people in the industry. Um, mm. Those five things are um, graduates and students to getting into the industry, the gender imbalance, the diversity imbalance, uh, mental health awareness as well within the industry, which is another massive issue, which mm. again, is not being talked about as much as it should be. And the fifth one is important issues such as net zero, fire safety, those kind of topics, which affects the industry and therefore affects everyone. Um, and having those five, yeah, those five points are something we want to make a positive difference to the industry and the champion to work directly with those. They help us um, give, yeah, they help us introduce, introduce us to organisations that are helping those five focus points. So you're, what you're saying is how much we can do about it is, it's because there's so many different areas that we're looking at, it is difficult to build something ourselves as a support, mm. like as a charity. But at the same time, there's actually a lot of stuff already out there, but just not aware of people aren't aware of it so what we our kind of focus has been is rather than trying to create a new charity or trying to create a new um service to help these five areas we're looking to partner with organizations that already exist out there so it could be mates in mind which is a, um, a mental health awareness charity focused for specifically for construction and um, there's a company an organization called Jement, which are helping um our support services they have a program at the moment with the CITB which is specifically okay. focused at graduates and uh, graduates who have just entered the industry they can offer CV advice they can offer um yeah multitude of advice specifically for that aspect so it's like okay yeah we could create our own service for graduates where something already exists out there we might as well just direct people mm -hmm. we might as well help them increase their online visibility so that's kind of the approach we're going down is that okay. we, we want to make sure that 
we have a specific page on the website. Someone can go to it, they can filter out exactly what aspect they're looking at, and then a list of organisations come up, and they can click on it, go directly to the website. We can give them contacts if they want to speak to someone directly, and that's the best way to go about it. We feel. Yeah, that's, that, that's brilliant, and it always comes around to that collaboration and partnerships again, doesn't it? It's a, that seems to be a, a thread running through talking to yeah. people. It's all about that yeah. collaboration. I, I just want to move on to the the, the job side of, of of things so okay. con- construction jobs account for about i think it's about five to seven percent of all uk jobs so it's a, it's a fair chunk of people that, that that work in construction and as i think i've mentioned this on nearly every episode we always hear about the skills crisis and the shortage of people to work in construction so if you're on your platform or or you're just job hunting in in general what tips would you give people for searching for the right contract the right work or the right jobs so in terms of that it does depend on what whereabouts you are in your career i guess so that's mm. one more on the graduate side if you're a graduate um, or student or within even the first year trying to find your first job within industry recruiters generally won't talk to you which is the gap we kind of saw as well um so with that the best thing to do is i mean linkedin presence building online presence is always a good thing to do make sure you have connections network with people that's the best thing to do at the start and we did uk construction week back in may and we actually the amount of people amount of students that turned up to that was yeah way more than ours expected we were able to speak to a few people after the event because it was like a networking event after the main uk construction we could kind of finish at five o'clock we were like one of the only ones here. And I think I spoke to a good six, seven different people from different students from within the industry, which again, that's separate. It's annoyed because they're applying to jobs and they're not getting any responses at the same time as a skill shortage, but that's a separate issue. Um, in terms of advice is, yeah, definitely get networking, definitely get someone to look at your CV as well. In terms of graduate schemes as well, um, all the big construction companies have graduate schemes. I think at the moment, they're, they seem to be opening or closing early and earlier every year. They can even be closed by December, January time of that final year. So you don't wait till the end of your course before you start applying for them. You've got to start applying for them from the beginning of your final year, um, which is something I wasn't aware about and I don't think it's mentioned that much. Um, yeah, so definitely on graduate schemes. Um, work experience as well. If you can try and get work experience, even if it's a week, even if it's free, just, just going to a construction site as well. Obviously, don't just turn up. But if you can just be like, can I have a look for a couple of days? I mean, most universities will do that anyway. Mm. But definitely no harm in trying to do that yourself as well. I I think that's a, a, a massively important thing to to note, isn't it? Even if the the, the roles you're looking for are architectural, they're office based. Yeah. Uh, or it, it could be a, a support service within the industry. What I found is hugely beneficial is is understanding the whole landscape and and knowing what a as stupid as it sounds, but knowing what goes on on a construction site yeah. and knowing how materials are delivered, knowing how it all works, knowing how it's all pieced together, um, uh, and and then that that helps your knowledge in yeah. in terms of right from raw material to manufacturing yeah. to to supply chain, to architecture, et cetera, et cetera. And if you haven't got that, exactly. yeah, you can be a bit blind to it because it is yeah. a really, really unique industry. It, it is, and it's a very collaborative industry, obviously, if you keep saying that. And it's, it's I've made the same mistake myself. It's, yeah. I did architecture technology, I looked at details, I looked at technical drawings and all of that kind of stuff. And even after university, even working for a few years um, afterwards, it's still... You still need to, yeah, as you say, you need to know what else is going on. Like, it doesn't matter if you know what you're doing, you have to know what everyone else is doing because no project's ever done by just one professional. It's always going to be architects, engineers, ground workers, site, um, site managers, surveyors, but everyone is part of the same building and everyone needs everyone else. If one thing's missing, then nothing, it won't get completed. It's as simple as that. And it's making sure that you can support what everyone else is doing. Um, it's, it might be something not within your own work but if you're aware of oh, I can't be an example but like materials turning up on a specific day or how you know materials for example there's a project we did where they just ran out of um blocks and as a um architecture technologist we know the strength of a block or we work with an engineer to know the strength of a block that's required for that building and 
in our mind, we're, we're not aware of material shortages. We're not aware if, mm. oh, can they actually get that block? We're just like, okay, that's the best one. Let's survive that. But in real life, it just might be a shortage. And there was, this is only a year ago, and there was a massive material shortage after the pandemic, and they had to use something else. And it's something that I myself didn't even think of because it's something that wouldn't be mm. our immediate aim is actually looking at what materials are out there. So it's, yeah, it's making sure you're aware of other people, what their issues they have and how you can actually solve their issues because they'll be definitely grateful for it and then they'll probably will turn the favor as well it's yeah it's knowing what everyone else is doing on a construction site and going to site is the best way to do that yeah ab- absolutely B- before I, I get your take on what the future holds within communities and um job hunting uh and and how technology um is is going to play a, a part in that what you feel the future is like i'd like to know what the next stages for build my talent are what's what's coming up are you looking i know you mentioned previously you were looking at technology but what's the what's the immediate future looking like for for build my talent yeah so for us right now it's we're continuing to work on our job board we're ever since starting this is something i've always wanted to make sure is that we stand apart from what's out there at the moment we never want to do what's what i've never wanted to do what already exists so yes, at the heart of it, it is a job board, but we're going, we're always going to step further. So mm. from what we're doing now to what we're planning to do, it's always going to be different from what's out there. So for example, yes, it's a job board, you put a job advert on the platform, but at the same time, we'll then reach out to our own network by email, we'll reach out to our own LinkedIn network as well. Like yeah, LinkedIn's not within our platform, but we still have connections there. We'll make sure we can find the candidates for people who've got the job adverts interesting statistic is that 70 percent of candidates are passive market candidates they're mm-hmm. candidates who would change job if they saw the right opportunity but they're not actively looking for them they're not mm-hmm. on the job boards they're not with a recruiter but if we can get a message out to them be like here's a specific job it's your job title or slightly above your job title you have the right amount of years experience it's in your right location it's something that we think you might be interested in why don't you have a look and yeah, they would. Is most people, if you saw a job that's very relevant to you, you'd have a look at, it. and then yeah, maybe you apply for it. If you're, you might not even realise that. Oh, actually, Matt, you are looking for your next role until you actually mm. in front of you. So that's the main thing we're trying to do, which we don't think any other job board is doing at the moment. Um, I mentioned before about using AI as well. We're definitely continuing to develop that. We want to make sure that when someone puts a job advert on our site, they can get a list of suitable candidates straight away. Um, we can then better match people to jobs as well linkedin does it but not very well you can get adverts for jobs which has nothing to do with whatever you're doing so that's something we're, we're yeah. definitely trying to improve on um so yeah that's what we're kind of working on now and um, we are gearing up for a second funding round in january to expand the rest of the ecosystem um the recruitment side is done or it's the first part of it's there we're definitely going to be making upgrades to it but the aspects the main aspect of it's there we're now mm-hmm. looking at building the rest of it getting the AI smart matching element um, completed and make, yeah, trying to get to a platform that can yeah, automatically help anyone as soon as you log on, sign up, you put in what you're looking for, you start interacting with the site in the back end, in the background, we're, we're already looking at how we can actually help that user find what well, achieve their career goals is the easiest way to explain it is yeah. where their goals could be like networking jobs. As I mentioned before, we'll help them do that through yeah, AI tech, but then also our own input as well. And and what you what you've just explained there is it's almost the the epitome of of human human nature and and marketing. I would say in that uh, the majority of people would consider a different role if it was placed in front of them. Yeah, <laughs> and, oh, and you know, yeah, yeah. It, it only gets to them with with good good marketing and and, and good comms, and that's part of being part of a, a good community that does that kind of stuff but it just shows how inherently lazy we are in t- in terms of I, I'd, I'd be interested if it was in front of me and someone showed me it but i'm not going to search for it yeah it's it's laziness but it's also just i mean you might not be unhappy you might be in a job and you're liking yeah. it and it's going for it well you might even like it you might not think there's nothing wrong with this it's paying the bills i'm liking this can be for each day it's, yeah, yeah yeah enjoy the people i'm working with but say so you're not looking like why would you look but if you see something that's suddenly obvious, oh, your dream job is a massive pay wise, it's in an area you're passionate about, it's um, yeah, you're happy, but you could be it could be better and it's just seeing what's out there. And if we can get it in front of them, then yeah, it saves them time as well, obviously. That's I mean that's, that's the aim, isn't it? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sa- saving time uh, is is the name of the game, really. It's important to everybody and, and any efficiencies that can be had. And that's why we all rely on technology and, yeah. and, and we're so well, passionate about pushing exactly. it. Yeah, so that's exactly what we're trying to do is save time for users, but actually save time for recruiters and construction companies as well. Like, un- open vacancies is bad for anyone. Like, for construction yeah. company, they're, they're missing out on work. Their projects have been delayed because they can't find the person that they need to help complete that project. So that's time to hire is quite a common term within recruitment. It's, it's we're trying to reduce time to hire with mm-hmm. using, by using technology to get the right candidates in front of the job as quickly as possible and looking in areas which companies aren't, recruitment companies aren't currently looking in. So with, with that in mind then, that final section really, where do you see recruitment and technology advancing and, and being in you know, I know it's a big loaded question, but, you know, five to, to 10 years, what, what what might we expect? Well, in terms of recruitment specifically within construction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's something that myself and Linda, Linda's one of our non-exec directors, she's focused on recruitment background and she's been recruited for 20, 30 years, I believe. And mm. um, we've attended a few recruitment base, um, I would call it, exhibitions um and that's something they ask a lot about as well is how does technology work for them in the future um is it something that goes against them will recruiters become like non-existent because of technology and what everyone kind of agrees with is that no they won't get replaced by it but you'll be replaced by someone who's not using technology Uh, sorry as a recruiter you'll be replaced by another recruiter who's using the technology and you're not it's not technology that replaces you it's someone who knows how to use it so that that seems and i'll say it's the same for construction as well it's mm. you can't be scared of the technology that's coming it's coming either way you either embrace it or fall behind and that's the same in recruitment they, you have to use technology and it's already happening there's a lot of new recruitment tech companies coming up in the last few years um which just almost like an industry that didn't even exist before like rec tech industry um yeah and we're making sure that we can one of the recruitment platform uh, benefits is that we have like a toolbox um, of different recruitment tech companies. So we're looking to integrate our platform with recruitment tech companies, using those companies all together into one toolbox and then going to a construction company saying, yeah, you can use us, we'll find your jobs, but we'll also look at um, your job ad, we're going onto different job ad, uh, different job boards straight away. We're looking at how we can uh, benefit using skill-based hiring to reduce unconscious bias. We, there's a company we're looking to work with that if a CV comes in, they'll automatically, the company, the technology, sorry, will automatically remove any personal information from that CV. So that CV will then get sent directly to the construction company and it won't have their name, their address, it won't have when they graduated, it won't have all of those things that could identify personal mm. um, aspects of a CV and it'll just have their skills. Um, we're looking at salary insights. There's companies out there that provides exact averages of a specific job title in a specific location on a specific month. And that can change within three to four months. It could be 2,000 pounds cheaper, 2,000 pounds more expensive. So it's, wow. there's loads of different recruitment tech companies now coming up, like video interviews is another one as well. So we're making sure we can integrate all of those into one place, go to construction companies who might not even have a HR department and actually help them do everything in the same place. That's that's really cool. Sounds sounds really exciting uh, and, and and a really interesting space to to be in. Um, Alex, thank you so much for your time. I, I really really do appreciate it, and it's it's really interesting. He he talks so passionately about what you've you've done and and you've developed in in Build My Talent, but also what the future holds. So thank you for for sharing. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, it's been great to chat about everything. Thank you.